Ladies and gentlemen, I want you now to join me in welcoming the head of humanities of the H. Lavely Stout Community College, the one, the only, Miss Rochelle Smith. Let's put our hands together. Good afternoon. The last time we met up, I told you, and you even heard about her earlier, about Pirine Georges. And you are like that so much that some of you are now meeting me and calling me Pirine. I don't mind it so much, but there are so many people in our BVI history that I have to tell you all about. Don't rename me too quick. Today I am leaving Pirine in the 1800s and I'm coming a little closer to the modern day to remind you about not one woman, but a group of women who without their hard work, many of us would not be here today. And to help me tell my tale, I brought the youngest of my 10 children, <laughs> Trifina Theodosia Thomas. <laughs> Somebody come hold the child so I could talk to the people, please. <laughs> Mind you. Today, I want to give tribute to the grannies, the midwives, who from before the 1920s and up to the 1960s literally helped bring generations of BVI Islanders into this world. They had no medical training except for their own experiences, but they were able to assist women in their communities in their travails. Nowadays, I have 40, 11 people in a hospital room full of shiny equipment. Well, it was me, Father God, and a midwife I call Cousin Silly in the chamber. And this one, that one the pastor holding for me, all the 10 others came out just fine, thank God. It all started with a call, not a WhatsApp call or a cell phone call. Sometimes a literal call across the hill, Cousin Silly, come, come. In this case, when I felt myself going, night had done set in. And the husband of mine sent two of the older boys for Cousin Silly. They turned off full speed through the night with just a flambeau to light their way. And they had to go cross Pompey level and dumb through the holler before they could reach Miss Silly in Soldier Hill. Two twos, they were back. They said from the time they knock on the door and call out, the hair has said, oh, can't see ready, I'm coming. Next thing they know, Cousin Silly was outside with her cloak on, her hat on her head, and her bag in her hand. She took the flamboy out of them by hand, and it looked like them had the devil to keep up with her coming across the level. By the time she reached, I was in the chamber under pain. She come in, washed her hands, and got to work. Cousin Silly checked me and realized that the time was near, and she coaxed me with encouraging words. We were there for a couple more hours before my little one made her appearance. And when she came out, the first person she saw was Cousin Silly. She checked the child good, good, and then cut the navel string. These days, everything had to be sterilized, pasteurized, and magnetized. But it was so hard in them times that sometimes it's the same house scissors that you used to use for one and everything that they used to cut the umbilical cord with, and then they used to use a piece of string from the flower bag to tie it off. By the time we get through, the sun was coming up. As customary, once she determined that the child was healthy and otherwise fine, the midwife tended to me as the mother first. She dealt with the act of birth, cleaned me up, and made me comfortable with a cup of tea. Then she tended to the child, which included putting on the belly band to ensure that the navel healed properly. These days, I don't bother with that practice. But in those times, it was the way to ensure that the navel healed properly. 
a belly band was made for the child again from a flower bag. Yes. And the child wore it for about three months. The mother had her band too, you know. I yes. you think these waist trainers that are you wearing these days, taking all your breath and making all your paint away from you, think they nothing new. No, sir. In them times, after you give birth, you had to bend your belly to make sure that your body parts, especially your back, heal from the labor process. And that belly band, often another piece of flower bag material was worn for at least a month. What a blessing a flower bag was in those days. When Cousin Silly finished tending to me and the child, it was high morning. She made sure we were all right before she went home to tend to her own husband, Buddy Ton, and her children. But that wasn't the last we would see of her. Of course, I had my lying in days. Nine days I had to stay in my bed. Thank God I had my older girls to cook and mind the house for me. But every morning, bright and early, Cousin Silly was right there to look after me and the baby. She would bathe the barber, taking special care to clean and powder the navel and make sure the belly band was properly tied. Right. Then she would look after me. She also made sure that my girls were washing the baby clothes well and keeping everything fire clean. Yes, Three days after the birth, she made me a drink to clean me out, as she put it. Lord, have mercy. I don't know what all was in it, but it had in some castor oil, a little brandy, and some milk, and clean me out, it did. She told me that that was one of the ways to help my body catch itself. She kept coming every day as me and the barber grew stronger. On the ninth day, she boiled a bush back for me, out of several different bush. I don't know. Again, I don't know what all she put in there, but I know it had in some salsa, yes. some bear wine, and yes. some others. First, she gave me some out of it to drink with a touch of palm salt and a little cane rum. Yes. Then around midday, she gave me a warm bath with the balance of the bath water. Afterwards, she massaged me and stretched me to make sure that my body was back in line. Once she was satisfied that my body was in order, she gave the okay to end the lining period and for me to return to my daily duties, which now included the care of the newborn. These days, there's big money in baby delivery and doctoring. But in them times, things was hard and people like Cousin Silly did what they did to help their community and not for financial gain. My household had not a thing to give her other than a few hands of banana and some toloma from my husband ground. But she received them gratefully. Thanks to Cousin Silly and God, I have a healthy child. What a sweet little thing she is. Can you see her there? The midwife I refer to in this piece is my maternal grandmother, Sylvanita Rima who assisted several women in Soldiers Hill and surrounding areas during childbirth. There are several men and women in the BBI today that I can proudly say that my grandmother guided into this world. And she was just one of many grannies around the BBI who did what they could to help others at a critical time. Some other BBI grannies or midwives included, also in Soldiers Hill, Janie Henley, in Brewers Bay, Manuelita Christopher and Catherine Jorgensen, in Harrigan and Diamond Estate, Leah Todman and Emily Brathwaite, in Bellevue, Coutin Bay, Long Trench, Far Hill, etc. We had Christiana Freeman and Catherine Hedrington Parrot, known as Katie Ben. The ladies in Eastern Long Look were assisted by Martha Dawn, Rosamond Malone, Rosalind Penn, Celestine Thomas, Caroline Rapsat. In Seacals Bay, we had midwives like Anna Scatliff Nibs, Brinette Fobbs, Sarah Martin, Margaret Nibs, Agatha Fobbs, and Eglantine Mactavius. Down in West End, we had people, West End Carrot Bay, Little Apple Bay, people like Belviana Crook, Ann Dawson, Elizabeth Donovan, Juliana Callwood, Allegra Donovan, Christiana Smith, Charlotte Heinemann Hodge, 
Dolly Todman and Teresa Tete Blyden. Over in Anigada, they were assisted by midwives like Angelina Valak, Camilla Wells, Mary White, Leslie Potter, Francis Vanterpool, and Agnes Smith. Virgin Guardian mothers were assisted by Trifina George, Adita Sprav, Francis George, Caroline Kuntz, Esther O'Neill. And in Just Van Dyke, we had ladies like Rose Shinnery, Anna Carlwood Milliner, Julia Hatchett, and Dolorita Juanita Hendrickson. I take the time to say all their names because we are often quick to recite the names of the international, the Florence Nightingale and the Clara Barton. But we can't afford to forget our own. We cannot afford to forget them. These women had no medical training, but they helped to deliver a nation. We cannot afford to forget them, and we cannot afford to drop the baton that they have passed on to us. We need more literal and figurative midwives in the BVI. We need more nurses to help deliver us and treat us at our healthcare facilities. And we need more women to take up the mantle of community building to offer our skills and our time to make the BVI better. Amen. These ladies that I just called out, they had nothing, but they delivered the world. Right. Now we have everything. Right. Let our legacy not be that we delivered nothing. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. I acquired information for this presentation from Nurse Nama Benjamin's book, Nursing in the Virgin Islands, A Historical Perspective. If you haven't gotten a copy of that book, please go and get one. It gives you a rich history of nursing. And I got information from interviews with Mrs. Adina Brathwaite of Carrot Bay and Mrs. Esme Stout of Ballas Bay. I gratefully acknowledge them all for their contributions. Thank you. Thank you.